What's up guys, how are you? Today I wanna do just quick, really fast overlook and comparisons of G.I. Joe classified figures because I have a lot of them. So instead of going in depth detail like I've done with a lot of the other figures that I do, I'm gonna try to do them really quick and just compare some, compare them to the original counterpart or at least the 25th anniversary in this case. Uh, because I think it'll help me eliminate a bunch of the boxes that I need to and get to each figure that I want to do so or I want to compare so today we're going to do is older but is none other than the scrap iron and scrap iron has been on for a while but he's starting to hit game stops again because you don't really see him anymore in any of the stores like Target or even Best Buys or things like that uh, the box is completely mutilated thanks to my cat because she loves filing her nails on things that are boxes but yeah, so I hope we can do these quick and I hope you enjoy them. So a quick comparison of this G.I. Joe Classified Scrap Iron Deluxe Edition. I'll see you guys in a few. Okay guys, and here we go. Let's start off with the Scrap Iron comparison. And I'm gonna compare it to the 25th anniversary because I collected almost every single one until the G.I. Joe's Collectors Club came out. And they started charging um, these really crazy astronomical prices at the time for each of these figures because of the fact that it was through a private, uh, you know, facility or, or or situation, and it wasn't sponsored by Hasbro. So we'll start off with Scrap Iron and his three and three quarter inch form, and as you can see, it has the scar. All right, the eye is messed up on his. Well, it would be my left, his right, right, or his left, his right, my left. You see that he has the helmet, classic helmet, and the cobra symbol in the front of the helmet. Then you see the vest with the grenades and the back pouch there, and all of the the belt buckles and and the, on his vest, which would be I'm assuming a protective bomb vest or a rocket vest to protect him uh, in some way, shape, or form is, it, you know, all the buckles are in silver. And you have the tempo of the Cobra symbol on his shoulder, black gloves. You see that in the bottom area here. Uh, it's just a classic crotch piece, the holster for his gun which is molded in, pouch on the side, knee pads are black, and then his boots are red. So this is the classic style look and color, keeping in mind that every single 25th anniversary figure was based off the original vintage uh, G.I. Joe, but modernized with the technology at that time to make them look a lot more impressive in quality with better articulation, paint, detail, and obviously sculpt. All of the 25th anniversaries, for the most part, came with stands because as you can see, their feet are small and they would fall down easily. So the stands would either come with the Joe symbol or with the name of the front, code name Scrap Iron, uh, which is really a really nice touch in that white letterhead. So then he also came with the rocket launcher accessory. All the details are there, not really painted, but they're there, nice plastic. And it does swivel a little bit and from side to side, but it doesn't look tremendously big, uh, but it's still cool that it came with it. It came with the two missiles. You can see there in that nice vibrant kind of neon red and then it came with the wire that connects to the rocket launcher to have him uh, what you call it to have him control it with the controller here to launch the rockets then he has his pistol that he came with there's his pistol. 
you go. I should have some tweezers, but there's his pistol. And then he brings, in this case, his protective shades and glasses because they made the helmet sculpted, I guess, for, you know, cost value or because it was hard to do at that time still with the technology to make it look good quality and realistic. So there you have the comparison where we stand with the 25th anniversary. So now we'll go on to the new scrap iron from the 25th anniversary. So now let's take a look at the classified scrap iron and see what's really different. So first of all, you see, he has a fantastic face sculpt, first and foremost. Level of detail is top tier, same as the face sculpt. You see the burn mark is pronounced, it's pohawk, it's nice red with some washes in it in black. His eye is whited out from an explosion damage. And the other eye is normalized with scratches there on the side of his fade and on his chin and his lip. You know that this was able to be achieved because of the fact that they're bigger figures with more quality con uh, you know, uh, and new technology to be able to achieve this type of you know, presentation. He has the red shirt underneath. He has the red vest with the black grenades in the same area and the pouch in the same area. Then you see this red with the black washes with the puffiness of the vest that you see is to protect him. Now, as far as the blue, obviously it's not a very vibrant blue. And I'm assuming the reason why they didn't go with for the vibrant, vibrant blue is because it wouldn't, it would look more, it wouldn't look as militant, right? Or as realistic. So they put this dark navy blue and it looks more like a realistic cobra tone right the symbols on the same arm as you can see there he does have a red shirt underneath which you couldn't do they didn't do that detail on the anniversary one but that's because of being so small then you got the black gloves then you got the harness here that connects with these gold and bronze looking plates to give him his holster and for one would be the pouch on one side and then the gun on the other. So the difference so far that I see is that the damage of his face for the eye, instead of being on the left side, is on the right side with the classified and then the 25th, it's on the left side as opposed to the right. And the same thing with the holster. The holster is supposed to be on this side from the retro and on this side is the pouch but that's it that's so far as far as what they did with the design then you have the pouches in black and then you have his boots in black with a red stripe around it or cuff instead of making the entire boot red i probably would have made the boots red to give it more of that accuracy but for the most part this is a fantastic, fantastic reintroduction representation of the original scrap iron. You can tell that they were trying to be as respectful as possible to the source material and no disrespect to the original vintage. Of course, scrap iron comes with this helmet that the visor is attached or the glasses with the Cobra logo in the front as the original, and, this, and then these lines sculpted also as the original 25th anniversary and the way it was on Vintage. Here is his modernized gun. Looks really nice, as you see there. Not, not some level of detail. And then the difference is, is this is in modern day. He has a control panel that is remote as opposed to being connected to the actual rocket launcher piece that has the antennas with the LCD screen it has some detail in there to control it with the sticks on each side which would make sense because it's in modern day clearly it comes with the two missiles as you see there right And so I was like, trying to show you 
with the light, fast light turned off. Here it is, the missile. This is laser guided, and then it has the lettering of X04. Brings two of them. Then he brings the smoke effects for each of the missiles because they come as part of it and you basically connect the missiles in the end there and it looks like they're blasting off from the actual rocket launcher base piece and he has these special effects around him that came and grant you this was a 45 dollar deluxe figure i think he comes with a lot of nice things to display him and make it look pretty amazing either around any of the vehicles or around other Joes as whichever way you wish, right? And then we come to the actual launcher itself, which they made way more realistic. They gave it a lot of nice uh, girth to it. It's big. It's got a lot of nice detail, the, the threads of the tank on, the, on each side. In gray, they don't move, but they are very nicely painted with the gunmetal on the side, with the Ant Tank 002M series, little sensor antenna there, lights in the back even, with the Cobra logo. And this is the level of detail you can go with and put into something when you have a much bigger piece in a much bigger scale. And yes, the lights here are, you know, sculpted, they're not stickers. And then those vent shafts in red are also sculpted. It swivels up and down and, you know, it moves here too. And you can just do all types of stuff. It goes like this. So like if you're posing them in different heights or rocks or something like that, you can do so. Or if you, you know, want to give it a, an action type of look, if it's rolling on something, for example, with smoke on the bottom, you can do something like this, for example, as you see there so what we'll do now is we'll put all the accessories together and make it look all coherent in one take so you guys can see what it looks like and so here you have it guys here you have them compared side by side with all the things on the accessories and you can see that they look both amazing and really cool in every way so do I think G.I. Joe's Hasbro team is trying not to respect the vintage style or that was their intentions from the very beginning no absolutely not I think that they literally love the brand I think that they really were trying to do good a good job with these figures so far I think they're trying to make them more modern make them look more up to date because the truth of the matter is, the vintage OLEDs or O-rings were fantastic for when we were young and we were growing up. But that's because that was the limitation of the technology for figures and that scale at that time. As we saw with the 25th anniversary, when that came out, it was much more advanced and we were all struck by how good they were. And people complained then, oh, what happened with the O-ring? Listen. These figures would have looked just as good as this in 1980. If in 1980 we had the technology to do figures in six inch scale and three inch and a quarter inch scale at that time to look like this, I guarantee you. O-ring would have not been even a thing. So for a lot of the guys and that are Joe fans, which get me upset, but I understand why it's nostalgic. is the way they grew up. It has a lot of memories when they were kids that just want to act like those were the only ones that mattered is kind of messed up and you're kind of i feel holding yourself back from a lot of nice things that are out there that are trying to be respectful to what we had when we were growing up and trying to do it better with the same love to captivate us once again as we're older and more grown men now that we still you know that are still collecting obviously figures uh, and you can see it here, clear as day. Um, you know, we can zoom in. Like I said, we can zoom in like this. And you'll see how great, you know, everything looks. And, you know, and the price disparity. Obviously, this was like $10 at when it came out. 
and this is now 45. But look how much more you're getting and look how much more advanced and great and detailed it is. These are fantastic representation in my opinion thus far. Scrap iron I think is a home run. And to be honest, when G.I. Joe was trying to be rebranded with the six inch line, what they were trying to do with Hasbro was they did all those designs based on new designs for the video game that was created by uh, the developer, um, I think it was called Fair Play. I have the game and those designs from Scarlet to Duke, Snake Eyes, even Firefly were all based off this video game. The G.I. Joe operation Blackout, which was a pretty decent game. You know, all as long as you can see the designs there. And if you look at the game and go play the game and you see the file cards of each character that's in the game, you see and notice immediately that those are the costumes that they designed the new G.I. Joe figures based on. So they try to keep it relatively to the original look, but gave it a more modernized look for kids of today, plus respecting us, the older fans, so that we would be captivated and, have a fa and be happy with what they gave us um, in this new representation. It wasn't for them trying to copy Fortnite formula and things like that. Even though people swear up and down that's what it was, it was not. Because this game and those figures were being worked on before Fortnite really became big. And, and that's what gets me angry. Because that's a false representation and misinformation. And the reason why they correlate that together is because they do Nerf guns, because that's what Hasbro does. And so they did G.I. Joe get guns in their Nerf collection and series that look like Nerf guns that were based off also, again, this video game. If you look at the gun designs, they were all based off that video game. Uh, especially when you look at stuff like the Hole and even the Roblox with the big gun that he came that was a big laser as opposed to his you know, actual rail gun. I forget the name of it with a proper term. So, you know, what gets me upset is a lot of figure collectors that are older in my age that started with vintage, they don't play video games, right? Or they used to play back in the day and they only played maybe until, you know, uh, like maybe the Super Nintendo or or maybe the PlayStation and that's it. And then they stop. So they, they don't understand that there's other material out there like comics and video games like this that are representative of what these companies do with these toy lines like they do with Transformers. That's why there's so many different series based off Transformers and so many different looks. So they automatically assume and make the assumption and jump on, the, and jump on it because there's not a lot of different variations of G.I. Joe toys. And yes, we've had a lot. Everything from Renegades to Sigma, but they all identify differently. So we're supposed to embrace it and appreciate it for what they are. They're at least trying to keep the brand alive and look respectful and look great based on the material that's being brought out. But as you ask me, Hasbro comparison, like with this comparison with Scrap Iron, they definitely wanted to make it look and appeal to the original look just with more realistic aesthetics and more up-to-date modern technology tech aesthetics that are available or would be available in our military today, which makes sense because this was based off the military in the 80s and 70s, and this will be based off now in the years of 2000s. So I hope you guys like the comparison. I think these guys are fantastic. These are knockouts. Uh, if you never got them, try to get them because I think you can even find them in deals sometimes on Amazon, uh, even though, like I said, he, you haven't been seeing them as of, as of late. He used to be readily available, not no more, but I just started to see him again come out and start popping out in GameStops. So a lot of the overstock they probably had, GameStop has them. Uh, and you can pick it up there probably with some deals, coupons, whatever the case. Guys, let me know what you think about the comparison. Give me a thumbs up if you like the, the video. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. Um, so again, uh, you can always find me on any social media outlet. It's all down in the description below. You can always, uh, you know, Help out the channel if you want, uh, you know, uh, by yourself, in the kindness of your heart, uh, if you want to, because it will help me out a lot. It will go a long way because I basically sponsor myself. I don't get nothing from anybody. Um, but, you know, you don't have to do it if you want to, like I said, in the kindness of your heart or just because you like what I do. Um, and all is also down in the description below with my PayPal and Patreon information. Or if you want to donate something to the channel that I can just highlight 
and review and showcase like this uh, and return it back to you or whatever. Just hit me up in one of those DMs. I'll be more than honored to do so. That'll be, you know, it'll be an honor for me to, to do it for you. So, guys, this is your host, he bought with a G.I. Joe Flash comparison. I hope you like it. And I'm trying to do more of these uh, in the near future with a lot of more Joes. So, yo, Joe, have a good one, guys. Keep collecting. Just remember, be considerate to others because we're still in trying times. Until the next one. Bye-bye.